it is in Kaede Harakazaha. What brings you here today? Huh? You two know each other? Yes. The Kaedahara and Amenoma clans were both members of the Raiden Gokaden. Historically, there have always been deep links between the two clans. After I returned to Inazuma, I visited Mr. Amenoma to pay my respects. Yes, you may recall the story of the Raiden Gokaden from the Iridori Festival. Though all bladesmiths trace their craft back to the same source, over time, each of us has arrived at a different blade-making philosophy, spawning the development of different branches of the same art. As an example, the Amenoma art strives to emulate the abiding patience and determination of water as it turns stone to sand. There is nothing mystical to our work. There is only practice, day in and day out until both body and mind have memorized the craft, turning each motion of every technique into an intrinsic part of the bladesmith's life. As for the art of the Kaedehara clan, I believe it's called the Ishin art. That's right. Ishin art strives for complete harmony between blade and mind from the moment that forging begins. For only a blade thus forged can capture and convey its maker's thoughts and feelings, and eventually become an extension of its wielder's will. Indeed. Most samurai choose their blades, but an Ishin blade chooses its owner. You are, without a doubt, the most worthy wielder of an Ishin blade. It gladdens my heart to see that although the Kaidahara clan has fallen on hard times, its ideals and virtues are alive and well. You overestimate me. My actions are guided by my own personal sentiments, not by any noble aspirations on behalf of my clan. But let's get back on topic. The purpose of our visit today is to gather some information on your missing nephew. We hope to assist with the investigation. It may turn out that this case is connected to another we are pursuing. Ah, oh, yes. My nephew. <sighs> I reported the case to the Tenryo Commission, but I haven't heard anything back so far. He didn't say a word before he left, which is very unlike him. I'm still completely at a loss on what to make of it, but I've done what I can so far. Worrying is futile. All I can do now is wait for the news from the Tenryo Commission. We heard that there was a collector involved in the disappearance too. Know anything about that? Yes. On the morning that Yuya went missing, he gave me a very cryptic look and said that he was going to give me a great gift. I believe he went to collect the item from Mr. Nagato after that. The next thing I heard was that a fire had broken out at the warehouse, and neither of them came back. Yes. Strange, isn't it? I wonder what could have caused it. Unfortunately, there was very little evidence left behind, so nobody knows what really happened. Hmm. Do you have any thoughts on what Yuya may have wanted to give you? If I had to guess, it must have been some kind of rare weapon. Otherwise, there would have been no reason for him to get my hopes up. He's never been particularly interested in blade forging, but has always had a fondness for blade testing, and can sense even the most minute differences in blade quality. He is extraordinarily talented in martial arts, particularly when it comes to the art of the sword. Truth be told, we have some information that you may find to be objectionable. The person we are looking for, he attacked this friend of mine. Based on the evidence we have gathered so far, only Yuya seems to match the suspect's profile. What? No. Absolutely impossible. Yuya is not that kind of person. He is humble and kind. Even his training is done with the goal of calming his mind. He has never gotten into a fight before. Huh. 
Is that so? Yes. If there's one thing I can say for certain, it's that Yuya would never draw his blade without a very good reason. But, with that said, it's equally out of character for him to just disappear with neither farewell nor fair warning. I also cannot know what course of action he might be capable of if coerced or otherwise compelled by circumstances unbeknownst to me. Anyway, should you find him, please let me know as soon as possible. Don't worry. You have our word. Hmm. From the sound of that, Hyman doesn't think Yuya was the one who attacked us as well. Yes. It sounds as if something happened when the two men met each other. Let's pay a visit to the Nagato household. I'm very sorry, but we cannot afford to pay what we owe right now. My husband has gone missing, and I'm still trying to find him. No, no. You misunderstand us. We are here to help with the investigation. We'd like to ask you some questions about Mr. Nagato's disappearance, if we may. Ah, I see. I thought the debt collectors had come to visit again. I'm sorry you have to see me in this dreadful state. Has some new information come out? Do you know where he's gone? I'm afraid we don't have any new information at the moment. We're still trying to find out as much as we can to inform our search. With this in mind, can we perhaps ask some questions about your family's current situation? Uh, for example, Paimon's struggling to understand why a collector would be strapped for Mora. <sighs> That's a long story. Ever since I've known him, he's been an avid collector of all sorts of things. He'd always get so animated when he was showing them to me. I knew nothing about the items myself, but seeing how enthusiastic and excited they made him, I was happy to believe that they were just extremely important to him. Everything was fine when we first got married, but as time went by, things changed for the worse. He lost his sense of restraint. He started buying more and more things, and even resorted to borrowing money just so he could pay for them. Our expenses really spiraled out of control when he started getting interested in weapons. It was awful. There were days when he'd spend hours down at the warehouse, admiring his weapons even as debt collectors were descending upon our house. He wouldn't sell them, wouldn't even touch them. Just sat there staring at them like... He was in a trance. I'm happy he has a hobby, and I'm willing to support him. But making ends meet has to come first. I've tried talking to him about it so many times, but he never listens. On the last day that I saw him, I gave him an ultimatum. I said, if he refused to sell his collectibles and pay off his debts, I would divorce him and take the children with me. And that led to an argument. Actually, it didn't. Generally, he's a quiet man, who likes to go with the flow. On most things, he leaves the decision-making to me. You must understand, I never would have dreamed of threatening him with divorce if the debts hadn't pushed our family to the brink. After I said those words, he froze. 
and was silent for a long time. When he finally spoke, he awkwardly mumbled that he would pick out a few items to sell. His voice was so meek and pitiful that I felt an urge to take everything back. But then what? If I didn't draw the line, what would happen to our family? Had I not indulged his bad habits, we wouldn't have found ourselves in such a predicament. And I also don't know if he had actually come to his senses, or if he was simply angry with me. The next thing I heard was that our warehouse had caught fire, and both he and the buyer had gone missing. I see. I understand. Amin Omayuya came to purchase a weapon from Mr. Nagato. During the sale, a fire broke out at the warehouse, and both men disappeared. At first, I assumed they must have gotten into an argument over the price. But my husband has never been one to negotiate. He never even haggles when he's out buying groceries, so it's hard to imagine him getting into a fierce argument. Hmm. Maybe he was feeling the pressure from the debts? I don't know. He just disappeared after the warehouse burned down. Perhaps he's too afraid to come home, now that all his collectibles have been lost in the fire, and he's got no way to pay off our debts. <sighs> Even though I'm still a little mad at him, we're a family, and I want us to face our family's crisis together. As long as he's willing to turn over a new leaf, I know we can work things out. Please don't get upset. There could be more to this situation than meets the eye. If collecting things is a habit that Mr. Nagato had his whole life, it is quite unusual for this habit to change so drastically over a short period. But the information we gathered from the other side suggests Amenoma Yuya is also a mild-mannered man who would not be likely to start an argument. Hmm. This situation is getting a little confusing. A little confusing? More like completely mystifying! Let's try a change of scenery, and see if we can piece together what we've learned. Rest assured, we'll notify you if we find anything. <sighs> Thank you so much. I just want him to come home. Based on the information we've gathered so far, I can only surmise that the sales meeting between the two men was somehow the catalyst for their disappearance. The fire at the warehouse likely played a part in how the situation unfolded, though its exact role is a mystery. Do you have any thoughts? Interesting explanation. I was also considering this possibility. Aminoma Yuya is an expert on swords. He could have noticed some problematic details about Mr. Nagato's collectibles. Maybe he recognized a blade as a fake, or a well-known stolen item. Either way, after arguing about it, the two men agreed to hide the truth of this matter. They thought a fire would destroy everything. But then the Tenryo Commission began investigating and uncovered some incriminating details, so they fled to protect their secrets. But it's a far-fetched theory. I can't imagine how they would have been able to reach an agreement. One fact that I keep coming back to is that Amenoma Yuya is polite and well-mannered, while Mr. Nagato is introverted and passive. Neither seems like the type of person who is inclined towards initiating conflict. Mr. Nagato, being heavily in debt, is also the only one of them with the potential motive to disappear after the fire. The more I ponder it, the more puzzling it becomes. Just what could have happened there? Right. Although the time frame seems to broadly match, no other details that we've learned seem to link the two events together. 
Amenoma Yuya lacks a key distinguishing feature of the attacker, namely that he is principally a practitioner of the blade testing techniques of Amenoma art, not those of the combat oriented Ishin art. Darn! We thought we could get two birds with one stone here, but at this rate, it's starting to look like a wild goose chase! Hmm. Let's keep going, since we've come this far. If we can solve the case, both Mr. Amenoma and Mrs. Nagato will be able to get some closure. Okay, but where should we go now? Let's head out of the city and check out the warehouse. There's still a chance we may be able to find some shreds of evidence. Wait. I hear something ominous in the wind. Oh! This must be another one of those sounds that only you can hear. As sketchy as that whole thing seems, you did put it to good use when we were chasing down that vision thief at Beto's tournament, so... Hmm. Now I'm picking up a strong scent in addition to the sound. It's right around here somewhere. It's gone now, but I can still sense the direction it left in. It felt very much like that ancient presence in Inazuma, the remnants of the Tatarigami. Indeed, but this unexpected spring of inauspicious energy may prove to be of benefit to our investigation. We should remain vigilant and approach slowly. So it's an underground warehouse. The force is definitely coming from down below. The source of the Tatarigami energy has long since left this place, but the residue it left behind still hasn't dissipated completely. Judging from the concentration, I would have to conclude that the Tatarigami source resided here for a very long time. Mrs. Nagato said her husband used to hang around the warehouse by himself a lot. It could well be that he was already under the influence of Tatarigami energy at that time. From what I've been told, Tatarigami does not turn all upon whom it preys into violent monsters. But most will develop a stubborn streak upon being exposed to the Tatarigami's unfulfilled will. Their interests become fanatical obsessions. Mr. Nagato had an interest in collecting to begin with. The influence of Tatarigami could explain why he became an obsessive hoarder, amassing more and more possessions even as he put himself in grave debt. Um, so what should we do now? Go down and take a look? Step back. I'll open the door and take a look inside. If we don't open this door, we can move no closer to the truth. You needn't worry. Both of us have faced far greater dangers than this. Relatively speaking, the risk here is trivial. Ah. Hmm. What's down there? Everything's buried in debris. I can't see anything. It looks like the fire caused a cave-in, reducing the entire warehouse to rubble. That was too scary! Paimon was so sure! 
sure that the warehouse boogeyman was about to jump out at us. All we can do now is keep searching in the direction that the Tatarigami energy source left this place. Two ordinary humans, entangled with the Tatarigami. I fear much misfortune has already befallen them. Yes, let's go. If nothing else, it's vital that we find out where this Tatarigami energy is coming from. Quiet your mind and focus on what you sense around you. Perhaps you too will perceive its ominous presence in the wind. From this point, the trail appears to split into two. The main source of the Tatarigami energy continued on into the distance, but a small portion remained here and seems to be dissipating slowly. <laughs> Quite possibly. Let's search the area. Something seems to be drawing their attention. Let's take a closer look. Right here. Emerge. of it, a letter, written on a piece of torn clothing. The ink is bone dry. It must have been written quite some time ago. Well, let's take a look. According to this letter, a conflict arose because Amenoma Yuya wanted to seize a blade belonging to Mr. Nagato. Yuya started the fire that destroyed the warehouse and wounded Mr. Nagato in the fight. Mr. Nagato kept chase as long as he could, eventually stopping here to write this letter when his strength gave out. So, where is he? He was not only mortally wounded, but also under the heavy influence of Tatarigami. Add to that the fact that its aura seems to have attracted a horde of monsters, and... I'm afraid he may no longer be with us. Whatever traces there may have been of his fate beyond after this point, 
They've since been disturbed by the hilly churls. There's nothing more for us to find here. Yes. Right now, we need to uncover some more important truths. If Amenoma Yuya is attacking other people indiscriminately, then the longer we take to find him, the more people risk meeting the same tragic end. Right! So let's get moving! I wouldn't be surprised if he, too, fell prey to the influence of the Tatarigami. For a practitioner of the martial arts, the easiest desire to inflame would be their pursuit of further power and skill. All the clues that at first seemed disparate and disconnected, it seems that now we know the thread that runs between them. I have a hypothesis that, if it's correct, not only explains the series of events leading to the two men's disappearance, but also zeroes in on the attacker's identity. Wait! You figured it out? So these two cases are connected after all? I believe so. But it's something of an outlandish idea. I will only be able to confirm my suspicions once we've met him in person. On with the search. We must stay vigilant. At any point now, we may find ourselves in danger. seems to have stayed here for a long time. Why here? Is there anything special about this place? I'm not sure. But on closer examination, I sense that the aura may have lingered here at several different points in time. <laughs> Show yourself! It's no use hiding anymore! Hmm. Kaede Harakazua. It's you, at last. Aha! So it is the same guy from before! What's your problem, huh? What could you possibly have against Kazua? Indeed, there should be no enmity between us. If it is Amenoma Yuya that stands before us. But what if instead of facing Amenoma Yuya, we are in fact facing the blade in his hand? Now that you mention it, it is giving off a strange light. Whoa, whoa! Surely you don't mean... Are you serious? Tatarigami energy often lodges itself within physical objects, then works to subtly affect any living organisms in its vicinity. The blade has resided in Mr. Nagato's warehouse for many years, affecting his state of mind and more recently using the sail as a means to affect, or rather, as a means to occupy, Amenoma Yuya's body. Hmm. You're sharper than I thought. You've already deduced the truth of the matter. Many, many years ago, I was forged by a famed bladesmith of the Ishin tradition. I was his pride and joy. In me, he placed all his hopes and dreams. As a descendant of the Kaidehara clan, you should be able to guess our greatest regret. I presume it has something to do with the Raiden Gokaden. Indeed. At that point in time, he failed to live up to the Raiden Shogun's expectations. In the end, all he could do was to flee the nation by sea on a ship bound for Snezhnaya. He was a bladesmith of great renown, a master of his craft. There was nothing that he could not accomplish. All he needed was more time and a little faith. And sure enough, in the end, he achieved what he had set out to do. All of his life's work, his wisdom, his skill, 
it culminated in his creation of me. He not only bestowed upon me the greatest of strength, but also endowed me with a consciousness of my own. In her conceit, the Raiden Shogun lost not only the single most perfect blade in the entire world, but also an irreplaceable achievement in the art of blade forging. So... swords can become conscious and control people? The people of the time in which I was born never believed I had that kind of power. They saw me as a mere blade, a sharp and well-crafted one, but in all other respects an ordinary weapon. But that gave me the opportunity to take action. After the death of my creator, I decided to leave Snezhnaya and began my long quest to return to the distant land of Inazuma. Moving from one person to the next, I controlled the minds of countless hosts along the way, each bringing me one step closer to my ancestral home. I seek but one thing, to face the full force of the Raiden Shogun's blade and prove my power, the might of Isin art! Ah, so Amenoma Yuya was not your first victim. Tell me, what happens to those you've possessed when you've finished using them? My hosts? Who cares what happens to them? They are but tools that serve my mission. When they got tired, or injured, or unusable, I hopped to the next one in line. All I needed them for was to take me back to Inazuma. You're awful! After I returned to Inazuma, I decided to bide my time in Nagato's warehouse until Amenoma Yuya handed himself over to me on a silver platter. At long last, I'm approaching my journey's destination. By Amenoma Yuya's body, I have found you. And by your hand, I shall defeat the Raiden Shogun! Kaede Harakazuha, you stood against the Raiden Shogun's Muso no Hitotachi. There can be no other to serve as my host for what is to come. Now, give your body over to me! It's only right history! Submit to me! Time to go! Join me and sever that divine life! Wind strike! That hurts! Show me right history! One with nature! Me! Fallen leaves! Adorn my night! He shall be right history! Join me and sever that divine light! Do not stand in my way, or I will strike you down too! Your bluff's fooling no one! You've lost! Lost? I can never lose. It is this body that has reached its limit, nothing more. Even if you defeat me here, the one who falls will not be me, but this man. He is but a puppet that can be replaced. I can take a new vessel at will. The end result is the same! I will end this wretch's life before you can lift a finger! And even if I were to lose my physical form, it is but a small setback. My consciousness shall endure. By any means necessary, and any medium available, I shall return and fulfill my destiny! Your fighting style. It is indeed the forms of Ishin art. 
but from your movements, I sense only hatred and arrogance, as well as a thinly veiled mania and despair. Really? You can tell all that just from his moves? As I've mentioned before, the forms of Ishin art convey the user's thoughts and feelings. Since the blade is currently possessing Aminoma Yuya's body, its movements express the innermost thoughts of the blade. If you ask me, the mania is probably due to your desperate, single-minded ambition. You believe I am your only hope. Are you trying to claim that I am helpless without you? On his deathbed, he passed to me all of Ishin Art's secrets. The little that you know barely scratches the surface. In that regard, why would I ever need your help? Because all of that is in the past. I've been wondering why you've not caused more trouble in all the years that you've been in Inazuma. If you are indeed a cursed blade that can possess its owner. Now that I've seen inside your mind, everything finally makes sense. You weren't biding your time. You were trapped. Hmm. After all the time that's passed, you have grown weak. To the point that you are now unable to acquire a new host without making physical contact. Oh, that's right. Paimon remembers now. Mr. Nagato had a habit of never touching his collectibles. Only when Mr. Nagato witnessed his wife's distress and decided to sell his collectibles did you finally have an opportunity to reach out to Aminoma Yuya and make your escape. And what of it? Well, that brings me to my second point. There's a despair in you that is so strong it threatens to overwhelm you. You were determined to fulfill your maker's ambition whatever the cost. But this ambition is too grand and too heavy for you to bear. Each step you have taken has come at a great cost. I think you realized your limitations long ago. The more you clenched your teeth and pressed forward, the greater your fear of losing everything you had achieved grew, and the more you wished to run from the truth. But the way I see it, what began as an ambition has long since become a delusional fantasy. What would you know about any of this? I'm just one step away from achieving my goal! You returned to Inazuma to prove the unparalleled brilliance of Ishin art. But to make this arduous journey, you committed countless atrocities and showed a blatant disregard for human life. Even if you were to sever that divine light, is this truly the outcome that your Maker would have desired? You... Sure, you inherited the secrets of Ishin art. But even as you made your journey to honor this legacy, you treated the ones who wielded you as mere tools to do your bidding. How could you possibly unleash the full potential of Ishin art when you act in perfect discordance with the principle of harmony between a blade and its bearer? Silence, you blabbering fool! I must achieve my goal. This was his life's dream, and the very purpose for which I was brought into being! I will concede that you are most perceptive. You see my predicament clearly. But you also underestimate my resolve. And you should face reality. Easy for you to say. Facing reality offers me nothing. I have no need of anything that would stand in my way. Not hesitation, not self-reflection, and certainly not your so-called reality. It is pointless to argue further, descendant of the Kaidahara clan. If you wish to save this man, then offer me your body in exchange. How stubbornly you stick to your wayward path. I do not believe for a second that you can challenge the almighty Shogun in your current state. So let us make a bet, and I will put your strength to the test. What? Surely you're not planning to agree to his demands. Very well. Then find yourself some enemies with whom you wish to cross blades. 
A taste of my power will more than convince you. Once we have dealt with them, we shall proceed to Tenshukaku. And as for your end of the bargain, if you lose, you must release Amenoma Yuya from your control. I accept. Don't do this, Kazuha! This is the only way to save Amenoma Yuya. If we don't do this, he'll forever be the Blade's puppet. The Cursed Blade's strength is currently very weak, and I sense he's hesitating. This suggests his heart is still not completely devoid of honor. The power of the Tatarigami lies in intensifying existing obsessions. This is the reason Mr. Nagato and Amenoma Yuya fell prey to it. Since I don't have any similar kinds of obsessions, I should be able to put up some resistance for a while. But... even so... Even if things take a turn for the worse, I still have you both here with me. We have a chance here to save an innocent victim. I am willing to accept the risks entailed. Your disdain for me betrays your woeful ignorance. I agreed to this bet because there are things I wish to learn, too. Now, take me in your hand. I'm okay. I felt a little dizzy at first, but only for a moment. It's all right. So far, this was as I expected. I will. Thank you. What should we do next? Have you got a plan, Kazuha? We find some enemies. Although this blade has endured much turmoil, it probably hasn't experienced many real fights. If a blade built for Ishin art cannot enter a state of harmony between blade and bearer, it cannot unleash its true power. If he wants to avoid reality, then we need to fight until he has no choice but to face it. He shouldn't last long in an intense combat situation. Wait a minute! Paimon remembers hearing about something from the Adventurers Guild. Since the Takasukasa clan abandoned that secret base, it's been held by Ronin ever since! Ah, uh, alright. Please lead the way. What about Amanoma Yuya? What should we do with him? The Blade says he'll let Amanoma Yuya trail us silently. Although he hasn't regained his own consciousness yet, he is not in any immediate danger. Are we sure this is a good idea? It's a pretty treacherous journey! Okay, fine. Just be careful. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>